Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to AJ102, Introduction to Criminal Justice. Uh, my name is Tony Farrar, and I am your instructor for the semester. And tonight's lecture, if you will, is going to be basically an overview of the syllabus. And we'll kind of take a walk through it and make sure that uh, you have a good understanding on what it really means, what the assignments are, when the tests are going to be, and how the class is going to kind of run. Um, a little bit of background about myself, which you probably have read online by now, and if not, um, I was the chief of police for the city of Rialto Police Department. I spent 34 years in law enforcement, started my career in Compton, California, and ended my career again as the police chief in the city of Rialto in San Bernardino County. Uh, with that, uh, my education consists of a master's degree in administration of justice, a master's of business administration, and an additional master's degree in criminology from the University of Cambridge in England of all places. So I've had a chance to kind of uh, go across the pond, if you will, and be able to work with and learn with other high-ranking police officials from around the world. So that was quite an experience that I hope to share with you this semester as well. So let's get started with this, and uh, this being the syllabus, of course, and this is, again, AJ 102, Introduction to Criminal Justice. It's online. And the semester, of course, is spring of 2017. So if this is not the class you're supposed to be listening to, then you may want to uh, log back out and go find the class you're supposed to be in. So we can start with the syllabus here. Uh, again, I have my name and some information, the address of the college, my desk number, 951-487-3505. If you need to get a hold of me by phone, email is the best wfarrar at msjc.edu. I'm also on Twitter, but bear with me. I'm not quite that proficient, but I will do the best I can to answer you <laughs> as quickly as possible with that. Uh, I do have office hours. Right now, I am at the San Jacinto campus, room 1254B, and next semester, I will, will be moving over to the Menifee campus, um, and I'll update everybody as that goes. So my office hours are from 9.30 to 10.30, on uh, Monday and Wednesdays, 12.30 to 1.30, and from 3.30 to 4.30. So those three different hour blocks, I'm available at the San Jacinto campus in room 1254B. Um, since this is an online class, if you need to get a hold of me, email again is the best, or you can leave me a voicemail. I will be logged on and online monitoring the class on Wednesday and Thursday nights for a couple hours, about 7.30 to 9.30, and I will have a discussion board posted for general questions should you have questions as it relates to the course itself. So again, um, I'll be available in a couple of different formats for you. So, but if you do email me, which again is the best way to get a hold of me, please preface it with like AJ102-2033, that's the section number of the course, introduction, introduction to Criminal Justice, and your name and the subject line of the email. So that way I know which class you're coming from. This semester I have seven classes, so it's going to be difficult for me to remember everybody's name and everybody's face. So you could help me out by letting me know what class you're in, um, and, and that would really help. So if you look down a little bit further and you see the red part down here, uh, the syllabus is a living document subject to change during the semester, and I will make sure that you are made aware of any changes when they occur in the form of an email or an announcement via Blackboard. So make sure that you log on to Blackboard and you have navigated your way uh, through different areas in there and you know how to do that. So that way you can pick up any announcements because things might change. You never know. If you have any questions about the course, again, email me. I would suggest that you print out a hard copy and put it in your, your office or your room or wherever it is that you study. So that way you have it available and, and you can pick out those dates on the, the tests or any quizzes or anything like that. So um, that's kind of a little bit about the syllabus. 
the course description. This is an introductory to the history and philosophy of law enforcement. Um, and we will talk about a lot of different components relating to law enforcement. And hopefully you'll be able to glean from this what being a law enforcement officer is like. Some of the objectives that we hope that you walk away or that we want to stress in this course would be able uh, to have you identify the major components of the criminal justice system, describe the differences between federal and state courts, and we'll spend some time on that, identify major theories which attempt to explain crime causation, meaning why do people commit crimes, um, identify the process by which a criminal case progresses from investigation to appeal, and then identify the Bill of Rights amendments that have the greatest impact on the criminal justice system. And there are many, um, but the Bill of Rights being the first 10 amendments to the Constitution, those are things that you're going to need to know, and we'll touch more on that later on. Moving on, this is the textbook. So you can see the author, the title, there's the uh, ISBN number there as well. I put a little picture of the textbook in there so you can see what it actually looks like. It is the 11th edition, so make sure you grab that. Uh, down below the California Penal Code, you don't really need that. It says optional. You can go to the website that I have listed in red down there, www.legalinfo.ca.gov, and you can pull up on Google anything you want as it relates to the penal code. So you really don't need it unless you really want to study it and it's long and kind of boring so um, moving on to the class uh, course guidelines this is a fairly fast-paced class with a lot of reading um, that you will have to do but basically the way that it's set up and we'll go a little more deeper into that in a few minutes but you have a whole week to do all of your assignments so the workload is going to be kind of your responsibility and at your pace so Keep up with the chapter readings and don't just rely on the PowerPoints to kind of get you through. I'm going to give the lecture in two different formats. I'll lecture on the, on, on the PowerPoints as well for, for our weekly lecture. I'll give you an audio version, meaning I'll be speaking about it. Um, and I'll give you one that is not audio, meaning you can just kind of flip through the slides and study at your own pace. So you can look at both of those or listen to one and look at the other or whatever you want to do, you'll get your choice. So some of the expectations of the class is that you will be required to, you know, read or review the materials, PowerPoints, lecture notes, articles, textbook chapters, uh, viewing the weekly videos relating to each chapter. So there's PowerPoint with audio, as I spoke of. Um, if you need text in the um, audio version of the PowerPoint, you can click the text button and the closed caption button and the text will come up. So that will help if you need that. Uh, participating in thoughtful and timely discussions via the discussion board. We will have an open discussion board. And during the semester, you'll have probably three besides the initial check-in discussion boards where I'll post a topic and it will open up during a certain week. And the expectation is that you will reply to the topic with your thoughts. Um, completing the online timed quizzes, the online timed exams, and then the midterm writing assignment. And don't panic on the midterm writing assignment. There'll be a whole separate discussion about that later on. I will help you get through that, but it, it, it's there's more details as we kind of get further to the end of the syllabus. But again, I'll make sure that you, you get through that. So one thing of note, not participating in discussion boards, missing quiz, quizzes or exams, or failing to turn in assignments or a combination of these things may cause you to be dropped from the class. So please make sure that you monitor your work and that you are caught up. You can go onto Blackboard and look in your grade book and you can see the things that have been turned in and not turned in. So make sure that you're, you're up to speed on that. If you're not sure what it's like to take an online class, I've included a link that talks about online readiness to make sure that you, you know that you're okay. Um, when it comes to organizational skills and time management and what have you to handle an online class because you do it is your responsibility to do the work. So uh, this is just a little bit of information for you to look at. So you can go to the link right here and it will kind of guide you through the expectations of online courses. 
Uh, technology responsibility. You are responsible for your computer equipment, internet connection, independent of the campus. So you need to be able to plan your coursework to be able to accommodate computer-related problems or issues or things like that. Uh, these will not be grounds for relaxation of deadlines or whatever. So don't email me at the last second saying my computer caught on fire or whatever you're going to tell me. You need to have a backup plan. And I can't preface this statement that I'm going to make right now enough. Do not wait until the last minute to do your exam because it would just figure Murphy's Law, if everybody knows about that, is that when you're on a tight schedule and you have very limited time that something will happen. So give yourself plenty of time to complete the quiz, the exam, or what have you and have a backup plan should something take place, okay? Uh, functions of Blackboard use, I listed under here some things that you really need to to know and, and to see. And when you log on to Blackboard, really navigate through a little bit so you know where things are. I made it very, very easy for you by putting everything into weekly folders. So if you click on week one folder, for example, in the course content, it will tell you everything you need to do for week one, like review the PowerPoint lecture, read chapter number whatever, and take the short 10 question quiz. That could be it for the entire week. And typically that's what your weeks will look like. So again, you have a whole week to do your work. So make sure that you, you know, get things done ahead of time. Don't wait until the last minute. But here, um, in order for you to be successful, I really think you need to check Blackboard minimum two times per week just to make sure that things aren't changing. Uh, look in all areas and make sure you're well informed about assignments. Okay, so you don't email me and say, well, I forgot to do the assignment, professor. So a couple of ones that are important, information, the information area. So when you're on your on Blackboard and you look at the screen to the left is a navigation pane and it's got links in it. One of them will be information. This is where the syllabus is located. This is where other instructions will be located relating to assignments and things like that. That's where an introduction will be placed uh, regarding myself and maybe a little bit about me. And that's where I might post some just information items. So check that every once in a while. Content. This is where the content for each week is located. So there in the content area, you will be able to find lectures, PowerPoints, audio, PowerPoints, links to videos, articles, exams, and quizzes. Everything is in that folder. And the goal here is for you to be able to find everything for each week in those weekly folders so you don't have to click around. The only exceptions would be things like, you know, announcement has its own link, the midterm essay. While well, you might find it in the content area, there's a separate link for the midterm essay. If you want to click on that, it will tell you what the essay needs to be about and the the issues relating to the essay and things like that. Discussion boards will be under the discussion link and so on. So discussions, while we're kind of talking about that, this is where group discussions will occur on various topics. Um, I'll have a discussion board for general questions as well. I may also post links to videos, articles in this area, and they may also be in the content area. So you may, you may find it in two different places. Um, announcements, this is where you will find um, announcements relating to the class, including relevant information on changes to exams, quizzes, or upcoming information I need you to know about. Tools, a great function here. You can monitor your grades uh, when they're posted, things like that. Help, extra credit. I do give extra credit. This is an area where you can find the extra credit assignment. Now, the assignment for extra credit is date specific, so please make sure you read the assignment and take notes, or take note, I'm sorry, of the dates involved here. So how are we going to learn? Well, we're going to do lectures, look at news articles, we'll have some visual aids, videos, PowerPoints, class participation, which will be online. Uh, discussions, written assignments, quizzes, exams, um, and, you know, sometimes I have guest speakers in other classes. So just because you're in an online class, if I have a guest speaker in a face-to-face -face class, you're always welcome to attend one of those. And I will put that information out to you. I'll let you know in advance. So you'll have the opportunity to show up to a face-to-face -face class for a specific guest speaker. Example, last semester I had a polygrapher, someone who does polygraphs. 
came out, gave a presentation, and I had a few students that were in an online course that thought that was interesting, so they went to attend, things like that. Um, academic support, I'll let you kind of read through the school website. Um, code of conduct, um, available in the MSJC catalog, encourage you to read it. Uh, but, you know, for us, being that it's an online class, just take note of the netiquette type area and understand that, hey, look, we're going to have these discussions on discussion board. And remember that we all have different opinions and you should value everybody's opinion. You don't have to agree with it, but you should at least value the fact that someone has an opinion. Therefore, I expect the discussions to be very uh, relevant and uh, you can give your opinion and what have you, but just be careful of what you say and understand that we all have opinions and I encourage everybody to share their opinion, but just watch how you say what you say um, and what have you. Please no profanity um, on the discussion boards as well. So simply, um, and, and everything will work out fine, but here's a little bit of information on etiquette uh, called netiquette. Exams and quizzes, very important part, of course. Uh, the quiz and exam questions will come directly from the textbook, lectures, the PowerPoints, or a designated article or, or video. Each week you'll have a reading assignment, which is like a chapter to read. The lecture PowerPoint, which you can thumb through or flip through, and you can also listen to because I will audio the lecture as well. And a very short quiz covering that corresponding chapter, so basically a 10-question quiz. Now, keep in mind that if you if you read your chapter and you do well on the quizzes, you're going to ace the chapter tests. Okay, and we'll talk more about how many of each of these you're going to have. But those quizzes are meant, they're not to, meant to be a pain in your rear. Uh, you'll have a quiz pretty much every week, and it's only 10 questions. But a lot of those questions you may see reworded in your chapter exam. So therefore, if you pay attention and you really study hard for the quizzes, you will do very well when it comes to the actual chapter test. So keep that in mind. So um, as far as the amount, uh, so again, each week you will have a reading assignment, lecture, PowerPoint, short quiz covers, covering the chapter. In addition, there will be three chapter exams. So you'll have three total. Uh, four discussion board assignments. The first is kind of a check-in or a survey. So that one is just more of you checking in and let me, letting me know that you've, you're, you're in the class and here you are and I'm going to ask for some information on check-in. So make sure that you do that as well. And that check-in information will be listed in the information area. And you'll have a midterm writing assignment. The dates of the quizzes, chapter exams, and final are included in the syllabus. All lectures, PowerPoints, quizzes, exams, and discussions will be posted on Wednesday night. So keep this in mind as well because I, I put everything in like folders for the week and you have one week to do that. So basically here's how it goes, okay? All quizzes, exams, or assignments must be posted in Blackboard each week by 11 p.m. on Tuesday night. So I will open, here's how, how it goes if I didn't clarify it. I open up the weekly folder on Wednesdays at 5 p.m. You will have that entire week to the following Tuesday night at 11 p.m. to get everything done. And I hopefully that makes sense. That's why there's no makeups. You have an entire week. So again, Wednesdays at 5 p.m., the weekly folder opens up. You can see everything inside of it. Every All the instructions are there. You do what's noted inside there, and you're completely done for the entire week. But everything needs to be done by that following Tuesday night at 11 Okay, so again, keep, you know, keep an eye on that. Special note here, um, on the weeks that you have a chapter exam, which means that, uh, you know, it may be chapters one, two, three, and four as, as an exam total, um, you're still going to be required to do a short quiz. And this is to make sure that you've been exposed to each chapter. I want you to have the quiz so you know what you're looking forward to when it comes to your chapter test, because I need you to, to learn that. This will really help you. Again, these quizzes help a lot with the chapter exam. So focus on your quizzes, as it says here. It's really, really important that you do that. As far as grading goes, here's kind of what it looks like. Um, it's a point system, so it's pretty simple. I do offer some extra credit. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But here's how it is. So chapter one, exam is 50 points. 
There are, one, there are 50 questions, one point per question. Chapter exam two, chapter exam three is your final. The final is not cumulative, meaning I'm going to go all the way back to chapter one. So um, I believe there's 14 chapters in this particular um, course. So you know, chapter one exam could be chapter one through four. And the next one could be five through you know, nine or 10, I, I'll have to go in there and look actually. And then the final would be whatever's left. So say 10 through 14 or 11 through 14, whatever it is. Okay, so those are 50 points a piece. Midterm papers, 30 points, your quizzes, you will you will have a total of 14 10 point quizzes, which is 140. So your total possible points is 320. And I will offer extra credit. So don't panic, but again, don't slough off to where you let, things get past you either. So um, some important dates to remember here. Uh, I, I listed some of those for you to understand, uh, to take a look at as far as April 21st, maybe being the last day to drop a full-term class with a draw, your final exam schedule, which is the week of May 20th and, and what have you. Uh, written assessment. So, okay, so mid, midterm paper. So here's the here's the midterm. And, I, and I'll post some other things separately from this particular syllabus review as well to give you a little more meat on the midterm. Your paper consists of interviewing a law enforcement officer and writing about them and their agency. Interview needs to be in person, not on the phone. Officer can be a federal, state, county, or muni, or municipal officer, probation, parole, corrections, everything is fine, okay? Um, the purpose of this assignment is to kind of get you out there to meet and talk with an active officers that you don't know. And I even helped you as it relates to, I, I, I put some questions in here for you to look at. So in your paper, you can include an introduction, who you're interviewing, where the interview took place, why you chose this person and agency, and a short conclusion. The conclusion would be kind of your opinion of the agency the officer works for, if you'd be willing to work there. Um, but here are some questions for you that, that you, can, you can ask the individual that you're interviewing. And you can go a little bit off of these questions too, but I'd like to see these questions somehow answered in the narrative portion of your, of your paper. Um, again, so here's some information on a summary paragraph. Um, suggestions, don't wait until the last minute to, minute to do this. Sometimes um, it, it's easier to call down there. You can call to a local agency that maybe you might um, you know, that has jurisdiction in your city, or you can pick an agency, it really doesn't matter. Make an appointment to go down and see somebody. Um, sometimes walking in off the street to the front counter and asking for an interview might be a little bit tough. So, um, but we'll, you have plenty of time to, to get on this, but, but don't wait till the last minute. A little bit more detail on your, on your paper. You'll have one reference and that will be the person that you're talking to. So that makes that one kind of easy. There are no makeups on this. If you don't turn it in, you're not going to get credit for it, okay? Paper should be at least three pages long, double space, 12-point font with a cover sheet and a reference page. And that cover sheet and refer reference page don't count as the three-page total, so you need three typewritten pages. But double space, 12-point font, it won't take you long to fill that up. Um, I included a link right here that you can see for Owl, Owl Purdue, which is great to help you with APA format also. In the information area, um, in uh, Blackboard, I posted a kind of a paper on how to write an APA paper. I posted a PowerPoint on how to do APA references or citing to make it very simple for you. And again, we'll cover some more of this a little bit later. Uh, plagiarism, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Don't do it. Okay. And everybody understands, I hope, and if you don't, email me about what plagiarism is. And the fact that if you take somebody else's thought or information, you're supposed to cite the information, okay? And this gives you a little bit of information about that. Um, and then last, um, but also very, very important, is here's kind of how the weeks are going to lay out in the course outline on what we're going to cover each week. And I've tried to lay it out there for you, easy to see. So week one which will be January 18th. So it will open on, I believe January 18th is a Wednesday at 5 p.m. You click on the week one folder in the course content and it will tell you what you need to do. Um, it will be the discussion board assignment. 
and the syllabus review, which is what I'm talking about right now. So you'll review the syllabus review, you'll look at the syllabus, or you can listen to me talk, whichever, or both. You can check in on the discussion board assignment, and that'll be in that navigation pane on Blackboard to the left where it says discussion board. And it should be the first one at the top when you click on that that says check in and answer the, the information accordingly. Week two content. Okay, we'll open up. So week one, you have to have done by January 24th, which is a Tuesday, the day before this day right here at 11 p.m. This week two opens up on Wednesday, January 25th. You'll have a chapter one lecture, which will be the evolution of law enforcement and the criminal justice system. So that's what we're going to talk about. So it's PowerPoint lecture. It's audio and not audio. So I'll have both of them there. I'll even post a little outline a very quick little outline that kind of walks through the, the, the PowerPoint as well. And then you'll have a quiz. This right here is all you'll need to do for week number one. I'm sorry, for week number two. Okay, and that will be it. Then you move on to week three, and every week it'll tell you what you need to do. So let's go to week five because it's a little bit different. You'll have the chapter four, contemporary policing is what we'll talk about. That's the topic, okay, the chapter in your textbook that you're going to read, right? Then you'll listen to or review the PowerPoint lecture. You'll do the weekly quiz, which would be quiz number four. And I just, you know, even though it's week five, it's quiz four, and it's all labeled that way, so you'll, you'll know when you see it. Then you'll have discussion board number two, which meaning that's an assignment. You go to the discussion board, you click on it, it'll tell you what, the, what it is. It'll open up any links that you need to watch, because typically I'll have you watch something and then comment about it. That's what a discussion board is. And then week six, so you can kind of get the, the full flavor of everything on how it works. Here's a different look. Chapter five, patrol the backbone of policing. You'll have a PowerPoint lecture, audio and not. Uh, the weekly quiz number five, but you also have your first chapter exam covering chapters one through five, as you can see here. So weekly quiz five, do the quiz first if that makes sense, because chances are some of the questions, not all, but some may be in the chapter exam. So don't do the big one first, do the small one, do the quiz, do well on the quiz, you'll do fine. So your first chapter exam, so these are all of these things, okay? The PowerPoint lecture, review, the weekly quiz, and the chapter exam, they're all due, but you have an entire week to do it, but just don't wait until the last minute, okay? So that's kind of how the format goes. Every one of these weeks is marked in the content as a folder. So you should be able to follow along week to week and make it very simple. Come down here to week 10 is spring break. You'll have an article review, which is extra credit. And this assignment is only open during spring break. I gave you no other assignments. Now, the way the weeks line up, it's a little bit off. So it's not perfect. But for week 10, which opens up on March 22nd and goes all the way to March 28th, because that's the Tuesday before the next week opens, that one whole week, you won't have any assignments. But if you're going to do the extra credit assignment, it has to be done during that week. Now, this extra credit assignment is worth 10 points. That's a lot of points, you guys. And it could easily bump you from one grade to the next, or in case maybe you didn't do so great on one quiz or test or what have you. Do the extra credit. Okay, it's really important. So pretty much this is kind of how it looks all the way down to the end. May 10th, of course, as we get right towards the end of the whole semester, we'll do a final review. And we'll do our final discussion board assignment. And then we'll wrap up with uh, the uh, exam three, which is the final. Now. If you have any questions on this, again, please feel free to email me or post on the general discussion board when the class opens, okay? Usually the class will open about, oh, say five days before the semester starts. For me, I think I'm going to open class on to where you can start to see things on Monday, January 9th. That gives you a whole, about a week before we really start to kind of get things going. Um, I'm always available by 
uh, email again so uh, utilize that utilize the discussion board and again that discussion board I'll be monitoring the general question discussion board but other students can answer other students it doesn't have to be me if you know the answer go ahead and post a response and help your classmate um, you know figure out whatever it is that they were trying to figure out the last thing is is I am well, that was kind of a interesting sentence wasn't it the last thing I want to tell you would be that I will offer an additional five points of extra credit for what is called the Perkins survey. You should be, as we get closer closer to the time the semester starts, you will get a uh, an email from the college about the Perkins survey. If you complete that survey, and I understand it takes like 30 seconds, if that, to complete, it's online. If you complete the survey, um, I keep a roster, it's an electronic roster of those that completed it. So you don't have to tell me that you did it. Once you do it, I get a, I have a roster that it shows everyone at the end of the semester that did it. I will award you five additional points. So here it is. You've got a chance right now for 15 extra points, which is a heck of a lot of points. Now there may be some other opportunities, but no promises. So do your best to do well on the quizzes. Do your best to study and stay ahead. Um, one thing that I have seen particularly with online students is that sometimes they tend to fall behind or they forget a couple of quizzes. But the problem with that is if you miss two quizzes out of the entire semester, that's 20 points. And there's no way to get those 20 points back other than the extra credit here that I'm offering. So with that being said, I'm just I'm just asking you to be diligent about checking online, um, looking at the um, announcement board to make sure that you're not missing missing anything, looking at Blackboard in your gradebook to make sure if you submitted something that there should be a grade in there. Okay. And then the last thing I'll leave you with is that sometimes I do understand that sometimes the questions might be a little weird on some of the quizzes or whatever, and there might be a little bit of confusion. So don't panic. If you find a question that doesn't really sound right, and this doesn't mean that, hey, just because you didn't like the question, I'm going to like automatically give you credit. But if I get a few students asking about a certain question because they don't, because it doesn't make sense, or maybe I made a mistake on the question and it was just a bad question, let me know via email and I will look into it and if I need to credit you a point for something here and there I will do that for you. Uh, that doesn't mean again because you just didn't do well on a quiz email me because you didn't do well. It's just if there's a question that's like a bad question and sometimes you may know what those are sometimes you may not. If I find a bad question as I'm looking through periodically and checking I will make sure that I let everybody in the class know, hey, this was a bad question. Therefore, whether you missed it or not, I'm going to give everybody credit for the question because I really think that's the only fair thing to do. With that being said, that wraps up the uh, lecture on the uh, syllabus portion here. Uh, please make sure that you, you know, come the 9th, that you log in and that you start to navigate around uh, through the page through Blackboard so you can see what's there and how things are are situated and if you get confused about that email me ahead of time so I can set you on the right path so we can kind of go through this course very streamlined with with, with not too many issues um, if there are changes I will send out an announcement and I'm very good about getting back to somebody via email and I'm probably good to the point of annoying you by sending out announcements because I just want you to know that maybe, you know, here's some changes. I will also have an area in Blackboard that talks about um, jobs. So you might see career, a, a link on careers or jobs available or things you can click on that and it'll, I'll post job openings and different things that are coming up. Uh, I will be sending out some information on internships where you can actually get course credit for doing a work-related volunteer type internship at a law enforcement agency. So that'll be coming out. There's going to be a lot of stuff that we're going to do. Um, keep in mind that even though this is an online class, I will still offer you the opportunity to come to face-to-face -to -face lectures on guest speakers if that is your desire. 
and I think that's it. So if you want to look at the MSJC faculty website and you can click on my name, you can see a little bit more about me. If you look on the information tab in Blackboard in this course, there'll be a little bit more information about me. And of course, if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. So that's it for tonight. Uh, this is, again, your course syllabus lecture, if you will, kind of the outline. And if you have any other questions, please feel free to get in touch with me via email. Um, other than that, I look forward to the discussion boards, to you guys' awesome quizzes and fantastic tests, and everything else that we're going to talk about this semester. So have a great evening, and I will talk to you on our first lecture next week.